Alright, I want to critique this young lady's video. She's got a lot of it right regarding the sons of God. But there's a couple of mistakes I want to point out that might help somebody. Okay, so let's listen to what she says. sons of God and when it comes to things like this we need to be able to rightly divide the word of the word of truth because a lot of times we just go based off of what somebody else said and we don't really seek to know God for ourselves we don't really seek the scriptures to see what it really says so when yeah so I, I completely agree that it, it seems like 99 percent maybe more of people that teach the sons of God don't teach it according to what the Bible says but according to what somebody else has taught them so when it comes to the sons of God a lot of people believe that the sons of God came from that not the sons of God that the sons of God. all right you'll hear that one more time in this video <clears throat> and I'm not sure what it is but uh, just try to bat, you know, power your way through it, right? Sons of God came from that, not the sons of God, that the sons of God sleeping with the daughters of men. But the Scripture reveals to us that there were already giants in the land before the sons of God began to sleep with the daughters of men. Okay, so that's her first mistake right there. She's saying that the giants were in the earth before the sons of God were sleeping with the daughters of men all right and that's I don't know where she got that from but she didn't get it from the Bible all right so let's take a look at uh, Genesis 6 and you'll see that let me do it this way you'll see the word Giants is mentioned just the one time it's verse 4 now the context which almost everybody seems to miss is that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and Eve, let's get specific all right so you'll go up to verse 1 and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them now pay attention because this is what most everybody is missing Verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. That's a big problem. Not that they were mating with women. That's not the problem, because God commanded that. The problem is they took them wives of all which they chose that's the problem all right and that led to more and more problems and wickedness got great and greater and greater and that's exactly what God is telling us here God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually Now, it repented the Lord that he had made giants, uh, excuse me, sons of God, uh, angels, uh, UFO, no, 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 man, man. It repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And the Lord said, I will destroy giants. No, I, UFO aliens, no, man. I will destroy man whom I have created. All right, so he's talking about man. All right, the problem, they took wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Now this mention of there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, 
which were of old, men of renown. This is a description of the, these last days on earth before the flood. God is giving us some sort, you know, insight of what things were like up until the time that God destroyed the world with a flood. Now, that stands to reason that God would paint the scenario to let us know why he destroyed the world. He doesn't want us to believe that he just destroyed the world by water just willy-nilly, just as a random thing. No. There was good reason why God destroyed the world with a flood. And there's good reason why, <clears throat> excuse me, God will destroy the world by fire upon the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's continue. And this is in Genesis 1, Genesis 6, verses 1 to 5, and I'll read it. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of it they, which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, Let, yet his days, his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, see there were giants, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. Okay, and also after that. So, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, meaning after the flood. Because we saw, we see men started to do that again. And it's very simple. It was not genetic, uh, you know, DNA manipulation. It was breeding. You see breeding happening today with all kinds of animals? Well, you can do that also with humans. You can breed humans as well as dogs and horses and so forth. Of them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. So there were already giants in the land before the, before the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. That doesn't say that anywhere at all. So that's one thing that we get wrong. There were already giants in the land. And we can also know that there were giants in the land because Adam lived to be 930 years old. How tall, how big and strong do you think somebody would be if they lived to be 930? Well, as tall as they got when they stopped growing, right? I mean, we see that today. Right? Some people stop growing when they're about 15, 16. Some people are early 20s and they stop growing. I mean, some people, it varies. But I'm 52 years old, and believe me, if I live to be another 100 years, I'm not getting any taller. I guarantee it. 30 years old. Today, the average height of man is, is six, but if you live to be almost 1,000 years old, you're going to be at least 20 feet tall. No, that's it. We, we've got evidence of how tall these giants were. And I think people undervalue how tall an eight foot person is today they're extremely tall if you were to stand next to somebody that's over seven feet tall they are a giant of a man it's incredible you go eight feet that's that's enormous and then to go nine feet Nine feet plus, like um, like uh, Goliath. That's incredible. There's no reason at all to imagine twenty feet tall people. We got a description of Og in his bed being thirteen and a half feet long, suggesting he was probably twelve feet tall that's extremely tall ridiculously tall but to go 20 feet you're going beyond anything that's in the Bible 
Same thing with Noah. Noah lived to be 950 feet tall. So there were already giants in the land. Same thing think, with Noah. Did she just misspeak today? Noah. Noah lived to be 950 feet tall. I, I think she meant years. I, I'll, I'll leave that alone. So there were already giants in the land before any of that happened. And these were perfect beings until sin came into the world. People were going to live forever. Their genes did not begin to deteriorate. <clears throat> well, hold on a second. What'd she say? People were going to live forever. Their genes did not begin to deteriorate the world. People were going to live forever. Their genes did not begin to deteriorate, to deteriorate as soon as they sinned, but it began to deteriorate over time. Okay. So that's why now we only six foot tall, but back then and they were huge. Well, okay, so if you go to Genesis 1, God tells them not, or excuse me, what is that? Genesis 2, excuse me, that God warned them not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Oops, there we go. Uh, let's let's go this way. There it is. So you see here and there. All right. So God made all these things in the garden, right? And then down here in verse seventeen, He says, "But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it." For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, God is not lying. He told the truth. It was the serpent that lied. But man was given the chance to do it on his own, and man failed. Adam and Eve failed in the garden. And then the people living 900 plus years before the flood they failed to do it on their own also they were given every chance every opportunity to do it themselves and they failed big time and when it comes to the sons of God many people believe that the sons of God are angels but there are a few problems with this the first problem we see is that it says that yeah, so I love what she's saying here. She's exactly right. She's just sticking it to these people that are living in fantasy land. And I'm telling you, these people are taking comic books from the 40s and trying to sell them as though they are reality. It's delusional. Sons of God are not angels. They're certainly not fallen angels. I mean, that's just incredibly disgusting. To claim that sons of God are fallen angels. That's ridiculous. It's a person that says that has absolutely no understanding whatsoever of simple Bible scripture. But what they're really saying is that while well, these sons of God were UFO aliens, in fact, where that comes from is this idea of green little men from Mars, which is comic book stuff. All right, now they're not only trying to sell this idea of UFO aliens, the green little men from Mars, they're trying to pass it off as though it's in the Bible, and it's not. It's ridiculous. It's fantasy world, sci-fi, comic book stuff. Said the sun and they thought that they were fair. Now, if these sons of God are fallen angels, you have to think to yourself, why would a fallen angel look at something that God created and say that it's beautiful? To me, that doesn't make any sense because the devil hates us. The devil does not care for us. The devil hates our soul. The devil wants to take us to hell. So it doesn't make sense that the enemy would look at us and call us beautiful. 
and then on top of that look at us and want to have sexual relations with us that doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense and what these guys are basing this idea off of is lust they are looking they've watched too much hbo and cinemax i'm telling you right now that's what's going on they've watched too much cable tv and they think everybody's having sex with everybody and everything's having sex with everything and it's it's incredible really let's see can we find that verse i oftentimes uh have trouble finding the exact this is not the verse i wanted but this is a this is this one of many for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust lust this is what you see on hbo and cinemax just porn 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 there's people having sex everywhere it's probably on daytime soap operas too who knows this is what's going on people are thinking sex 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 oh and then they read the bible and they're still thinking sex 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 and they're seeing and imagining this idea of angels having sex with women it's not in the bible but because they're so full of lust that's what they're teaching all right and so let's go there's one more in, in what is it first peter second peter i can't never remember nothing second peter knowing this first knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust this is what's happening these people are trying to make a mockery of the holy bible and teaching these ridiculous doctrines of angels having sex with everybody it's not happening now and it's not happened it never happened back then it's never happened angels are not beings angels are not lustful creatures angels are not procreating angels are not sons of god here i'll let her explain it so that's the first reason how we can tell that the sons of god are not fallen angels and then if you look at Matthew 22 and 30, Jesus tells us that the angels don't marry. So if angels don't marry, how could the sons of God be angels if they marry the daughters of men? Jesus tells us that angels don't marry. So the sons of God cannot be angels because they don't get married and they don't have relations. So the sons of God also appear in the book of Job. So when we read the book of Job, it tells us that the sons of God went to present themselves before the Lord and Satan appeared also. Now there's a problem with that because if we're saying that the sons of God are angels, then we are saying that Satan was at the throne of God. So how can Satan be at the throne of God? Because if these are angels presenting them, themselves, they're going to present themselves at the throne of God in heaven. So if the sons of God or angels, how could Satan be in heaven at the same time also presenting himself? That doesn't make sense. The Bible tells us that this, this corruption must put on incorruption. So we ourselves have to be clean. We ourselves have to be made holy, have to be made righteous before we can enter into heaven. So how can Satan be in the presence of God after he has sinned? That doesn't make any sense. So that's another reason how we know that the sons of God are not angels. Because if the sons of God were in the presence of the Lord, how could Satan also be there? There's no sin in heaven. If we're going to say that Satan was at the throne of God, then we're saying that sin was in heaven. And there is no sin in heaven. One thing that we have to understand is that when iniquity was found in Satan, Satan was not in heaven because there is more than one heaven. Because in the book of Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells us that he, that God placed, us, placed the sun in the heavens to give light unto the earth. So the sky is also a heaven. That's why the devil is known as the prince of the power of the air. And that's why the Bible tells us that heaven and earth are going to pass away. Yes, amen. I can't pray for you. The Bible tells us that heaven and earth are going to pass away because when Jesus comes back and a new Jerusalem comes down, we are no longer going to need the heavens because Jesus is going to be the light for us. So the whole heaven is going to pass away. Jesus is going to be the light. We're not going to need it anymore. 
And then when in the book of Job, when God asked Satan where he was, he said going to through the earth. So Satan was on earth when he was talking to God. He was not in heaven. So that's how we know that these sons of God were not angels because they were on earth when they were presenting presenting themselves to God. They were not in heaven because they were not angels, but they were on earth and Satan came between them and he talked to God on earth. They were not angels. They were people. And 1 Corinthians 15 and 23, like I said, the Bible tells us that we have to put on incorruption. So if we want to enter into heaven, then we have to be clean. Same thing with the enemy. Once he sinned, he had no more access into heaven. So when it comes to who the sons of God actually are, well, the sons of God are the children that Adam and Eve had inside the garden. Now, how do we know this? Because the Bible tells us that Jesus, Jesus told them to be fruitful and multiply. Okay. Well, I'm going to... No, I, at first I didn't agree. Then I agreed for a long time there. And now I got another disagreement. So she's saying that the... Um, that there were children born inside the Garden of Eden before they were kicked out. Okay. And she says, be fruitful and multiply. Let's see if we can find that verse here. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. So if we look at the context of this first mention, I'm not saying she's wrong that God said that, but let's uh, understand it correctly and appropriately here this was on the fifth day and so the first mention when God says be fruitful and multiply he's not talking about people he's not talking to Adam and Eve inside the garden right so it's not until day six when man was made all right but in verse 28 talking about man because it's verse 26 where he says and God said let let us make man in our image and God blessed them God said unto them be fruitful and multiply right so this is not how do I say this this is not um, inclusive, I guess, to being inside the garden. Okay. I and so that's what he did. He looked at the earth and he seen that everything was perfect. So when he said, "Be fruitful and multiply," that's what they did. They were fruitful and they multiplied and they had children in the garden. We don't know how many they had. Nah. Well, we don't know how many they had, but let's. We're, it tells us who the first was and that was Cain was the first born of Adam and Eve All right. so um, again and Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said I have gotten a man from the Lord alright and then Abel was it's assumed that Abel was the second it's not that big a deal but to suggest that there were children before Cain you have to go outside the Bible it doesn't make any sense at all that they were having children inside and I'll show you in a little bit here I just want to sort of scroll through these um, so here let's let her keep talking she talks better than I do but we know that they did have children in the garden because they fulfilled that command that God gave them 
And also in Genesis 3 and 16, we see that the Bible says that God was going to multiply Eve's um, sorrow and childbearing. So how can you multiply something, multiply the pain if she never had pain in the first place? So because she had that pain in the first place, that lets us know that she already had children. And Oh, okay. So let's examine that. Let's take a look-see. Oh, let's do it. How do we want to do this here? We could we could do it this way to make it easier. Okay. This is the verse that she's describing. Verse 16, Genesis chapter 3. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So, first of all, we got to understand the context, all right? Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman explained to the serpent, and then the serpent beguiled Eve, and they did eat. All right, so God found Adam and Eve, and they were ashamed because they were naked, and they, they were ashamed because they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil which the Lord God had forbidden them to do and because they did that uh, let's just read it here verse 13 and the Lord God said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done and the woman said the serpent beguiled me and I did eat and the Lord God said unto the serpent because thou hast done this Thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat of all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now that's coming at the return of Jesus Christ, when he will put his enemies at his feet. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. She is claiming that because God said that Eve must have already had children. And I'm telling you, that's not true at all. It's because of what happened that God sent them out of the garden to have children and not just have children but that uh, these are the elements that will come with having children I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and bring and thou shalt bring forth children to me that suggests all the way that she didn't have any children there's no mention of her having children at all and it wouldn't make any sense to say that she had children before Cain it, I, I don't believe it at all it's not mentioned anywhere in the Bible inside the garden If we look at Romans 5 and 17, it says, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the multitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. So who are they that did not sin after Adam's transgression? That means did the same thing that did the same sin that Adam did. Those were the children that were in the garden because they are the only ones that had the ability to sin like he did. Well, okay, and so I, I guess I forgot to mention this kind of, I kind of left this out. So after, after Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and after Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, that's when Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living and the firstborn was Cain. The ones in the garden. 
And we also know that the sons of God were not angels because the Bible tells us in Hebrews 1 and 5 that he never called an angel his son. Jesus never called any angel his son. So how could the sons of God be angels when God does, has never called an angel his son? We are the sons of God. The Bible tells us, beloved, now we are the sons of God. So if we're the sons of God, how could the angels and us be the sons of God at the same time? And the people in the garden, they were called the sons of God because they were not born or shaped in iniquity. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, I don't agree with that at all. <clears throat> so let me explain this real simply. That the sons of God, Adam being the first son of God, all his children were sons of God. Everybody was the son of God up until the time of Abraham. And Abraham was given a promise by God. And when God gave that promise, that's when the separation began. All right, so now the promise to Abraham and his children was the promise of everlasting life. And of those people, the promise is given to, are they now the sons of God? Or are they then the sons of God? All right, and so that separation was made. And so the children of God were the people of Israel. All right. The children of God is the same thing as sons of God. There's no difference. All right. And so because that promise was made, there was the children of God separate from the rest of the world. They were separated. And there's, it's, this is, there's example after example given in the Bible of this. And so fast forward to Jesus Christ. Now that we believe in him, are we the sons of God? Let, let, let's let her explain it. She talks a lot better than I do. They were not born or shaped in iniquity. They were without sin. So us today, we are now without sin because we have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We had our sins washed away. We were born again by the blood. We have the blood upon us that makes us a son. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. So now we are the sons of God. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, we can now receive the adoption of sons. Through the baptism in Jesus' name, we are now born into holiness. And through the blood of Jesus, Jesus is our Father. So now we are known as the sons of God. I never said I was the son of God. I said we are the sons of God. Jesus is the son you, of God. You are. We are the son. You are a son of God. Sons of God. Little, little lady, you are a son of God. Yes, Jesus is God. So listen, I am a son of God. She makes a great point that angels are not sons of God. It's not the same thing. I am a son of God. And believe me, I'm no angel. Thank you, Minister Volker. She might be done here. I think she's going to wrap up. I'm not sure. Yeah, but anyways, the sons of God, they couldn't be angels. Because Jesus never called the angels his son. But we were always known as the sons of God. Because once we got baptized in Jesus' name, we were no longer born or shaped in iniquity. Now we're now holy. We're now clean. We're now just like the ones that were born in the garden. Uh, no, God picked us no. up out of dirt, out of sin, and he cleaned us up. And that's that's what was able to give us, to make us an adoption of sons. So, that is all I have for today about the sons of God. If anyone missed it, I will be posting this on my YouTube channel, Keep It Apostolic. Okay. So, I enjoy this. Uh, I sub to her. She's 
she's great and just like anybody else I don't agree with anybody on everything but it's an interesting topic and I wanted to share my thoughts and be fair and let her share her thoughts regarding these sorts of things um, again her name is keep it apostolic I can't I can't say that word apostolic uh, but uh, no she's she's got a lot of uh, interesting things that she shares and uh, I appreciate uh, her talking about this because I don't think enough people are talking about it it, it seems to me like the majority of the time when people talk about this they're just saying the same things that were told to them and they're not actually digging into the Bible and actually considering what the Bible says it, I could go over this again it's unbelievable it doesn't matter people won't listen to me but maybe they'll listen to her and she's telling everybody she's doing a real good job of this she's telling everybody angels are not sons of God they're not not a single time in the Bible is it ever suggested that angels are sons of God and if you think there is you're deceived you're imagining it because it just does not exist it would contradict with the rest of the Bible it would nullify the entire Bible if there's one thing wrong with it and I better stop it now I'll just go on another rant but uh, if you made it this far thank you